morning, everybody. First of all, uh, I would like to thank the Royal Library of Belgium and the Cinematheque to invite me today. And I will try to explain you the, the actual legal framework, Belgian legal framework of today. Of course, it has a lot uh, from the directive. We were maybe not so original. But um, it is what it is now, um, so I will try to explain it to you. So what I will try to explain, first of all, I will, from a legal point of view, explain to you what are orphan works, what is the legal basis in Belgium, who are the beneficiaries, the terms of use, and when it takes an end, the orphan work stages. So what are orphan works? It are uh, works from which the white holders cannot be identified or located. And when there are more white holders, what is very often the case, it is when at least one cannot be identified or located, and the ones that we know, that we find, they need to give an authorization to use the work. So this is a, an exception to the general Belgian principle where normally when there are more right holders, they cannot use it alone and without the other one. So here it is an exception to the general Belgian principle. So not all works in, in the main point, from the main point of view can be orphaned. Which ones? It are books, newspapers, magazines, etc. Phonograms, audiovisual works, and cinematographic works, but also other works on the condition that they are incorporated in the former works, for example, a photograph or a picture in a book. So, um, then there is one condition more <laughs> it needs to be contained in a collection of publicly accessible libraries educational establishments, museums or archives are in, produced by public service broadcasting organizations until the end of 2002 and contained in their archives. So after 2002 they are supposed to have no more orphan works that they know of. <coughs> So the legal basis in Belgium is first of all, like we said before, the directive of 2012. We, Belgium, we transposed this directive in the Code of Economic Law in 2015. As maybe some of you know, but not everybody, before we had a copyright law that is now taken over in a Code of Economic Law in Book 11. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and yesterday there were two royal decrees, so it's the execution measures that were published in what we call the Monitor Bench, <laughs> so it's an official gazette. Who are the beneficiaries? It's not me, I can uh, not <laughs> put an orphan work in a database. So it is not everybody, it's a limited number of uh, institutions needs to be public accessible <laughs> libraries, educational establishments, museums or archives, or film or audio heritage institutions. So um, we, we are Belgian and we have three official languages, but we mostly work with two, it's French and Dutch. And um, sometimes we have some difficulties that the directive says one word in French and another word in Dutch. So we often had in this uh, Orphan Works Directive some questions about this. And the public service broadcasting organizations are also beneficiaries. What are the terms of use? We talked about it before, so what you need to do is a diligent search. It's one um, condition you need to do. And also register in the database. So the diligent search, how will, will these institutions in Belgium at least do it? In the directive there was an annex with all databases you had to consult. So we took over um, this annex, we were obliged to do it. And you will find there of course uh, the legal deposits. Also existing uh, databases like WASH and the standard numbers. 
all these different standards numbers you have to look and then the collective uh, management organizations the CMOs you have to consult them to see um, if they know the right holder and then you have also the um, you need to look at the, um, at the photograph agencies for example here reporters photo news if you can find it there of course we, we consulted the people and they asked to add some belgian typical belgian sources and we added Unicat, for example, and Kunstenpunt, and Musikarchiv. So maybe also for others, if you need to look for Belgian work, these are maybe um, the sources where you need to have a look in. So one of the things is also, like I said before, we, we have these language problems. And in French, it was written, once you have done this diligent search, you, you need to register the results of your diligent search. When you looked in the Dutch version, it was written, it is written, that you need to keep the documentation, the documentatie bij houden. So the legislator decided that only to keep the documentation is not so difficult, not so heavy, as to make a register with all your diligent searches. So in Belgium, they decided then to use the Dutch version of the directive and to say, you only need to keep the documentation. You don't need to make a register and keep it of all the diligent searches. One of the questions that raised in every country is what if there is a dispute of the right holder, etc. So in the Belgian legislator, he decided that it will be the normal, um, the normal rules, the normal court proceedings that need to be followed. So if one, someone claims to be the right holder and someone else says, no, you're not the right holder, you just need to follow the normal procedures as with any work. So the end of orphan work status, well, when will it arrive? Of course, when the right holder appears. So um, in the database, you will see later, they can also claim a work. What happens then? the right holder comes and says, I'm here, or I'm the daughter, <laughs> or <laughs> the son of a right holder. Well, it's quite easy. You, you need to pay for the use you made from it. So um, that's what's going to happen. And if there is a dispute in Belgium, they decided uh, that it are the normal rules that will apply. So maybe we can go to the questions. I was very short sure because the public is very diverse and I was thinking maybe people do not want to know all legal details, but I'm available to give them, of course, um, now. And also later, uh, you can have my email address and uh, at any time I'm prepared to answer to the questions. Thank you very much. Questions for Nicola or Natasha? <coughs> so, you ready? Uh, I have a very practical question to Natasha on, on the Belgian system, uh, which is uh, on the last point that I, I'm not uh, trying to find infringements, I don't worry, not, <laughs> you know, because I said before that the commission has a role. <laughs> to ensure the correct implementation, but it's really generally to try to understand uh, uh, the aspect of uh, compensation for the authors or the right holders that, uh, you know, may have been on holidays at any moment when the diligent search was being carried out and two years after finds out uh, thanks uh, to the database in Alicante that the work has been used. Is there any role that you have foreseen or that you think can be foreseen for collecting societies actually in being somehow involved in the payment of the compensation or the idea is uh, simply that uh, if the author comes back then there will be a sort of direct uh, you know, payment and dialogue between uh, the cultural institution uh, and uh, uh, the author himself. So it's a very practical question but uh, it's interesting because I 
you know, I, I don't know, it's not only about Belgium, actually. I'm trying to understand a bit how the thing has been taken across Europe, but also because I suspect that so far probably there have been, I don't know, Kita, if you have any information, almost uh, no cases that we know of the older sector with that uh, resurrected. Let's say from uh, after not having been found uh, in the first uh, place, but but there is this aspect of how the compensation mechanism is going to work in practice and whether it goes to collecting societies or that. Yes, you, you asked me a question. Actually, the Belgian law is um, saying that the king still needs to take away a decree about this. Yeah, so it is not taken yet um, because uh, it's a very difficult question. Because there are not a lot of cases, and the first idea was to make a quite complicated system with tariffs, etc. But maybe it, it will never happen. And also, if the work is orphan, probably that the right holder is not a member of a collecting society. So it's a little bit, we are thinking about it. And um, for the moment, there is no real decree. I know there were some thoughts to change the law and just let it decide by by negotiation if there is no agreement by the court so unfortunately i cannot give you an answer and i hope it will not happen too often <laughs> so yeah. other questions uh, thank you for your presentations i was just wondering uh, if I want to digitize uh, a work from another country, I suppose I'm supposed to do a diligent search in the other country. Is there somewhere uh, a recording of all the sources I have to check in the other countries? Because the ones you showed for Belgium are rather <laughs> numerous. <laughs> I can't imagine, I mean, if I want to digitize something from Italy, because it's in my collections and it's in a very bad state, where should I search them? Yes, you need um, the directive to some indications about that too. You need. You have uh, this first list I will show you is um, oops. all these uh, first ones are um, are in the annex of the directive, so it will be the same for uh, every member state, or it should be because uh, we had to take it over. And then you have some national sources, and they can vary, but you also need to look, if you have some indications that um, the right holder is not Italian, you will have to look in these other countries. So, uh, so but these first sources of the annex, it will be the same in, in Italy. And then you need to look in, in Italy if they added sources or not. And you also, you need to do it in good faith, so you know it's from some country you need to look there at the source, even if it's maybe not legally, legally mandatory. So it needs to be done in good faith. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, there is a simple answer. First of all, you don't do it. And second, if, I don't know about books, if your work is an audiovisual, no, it's on books, but then you are in big trouble because if it were an audiovisual, Forward provides a list, provides a legal framework per country. So not only the, legis the, the sources, but also the specifics of the legislation. Whatever perversion they wrote in their national law, we took care of it. And I tell you, there is a lot of perversions. So, so there is a, a so if, let's say you have a thing from from Italy, so there is a thing called I want to search according to Italian law in Italian sources, and you can do that. But this is only for the visual, not for books, because I, I can't read. If I can add one story, maybe with a two-hour limit, to have a look in the existing database also, because there are already often works and people who do diligent searches, so maybe you will not have to do it over and be a user. We, we will see later. Yeah, perhaps there is something yeah. to, to build on this way for printed habitation. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, you can also have another question. If you find information concerning a certain work which has been recognized as orphan work, that means that someone else made the research, the search, and that someone else already digitized it. Perhaps or not. So Yes, uh, it's Arnaud Dupuis, uh, your cinema. I had a question which was actually to, to Mr. Giorello in the, in the light of what has just been presented. When you made your introduction, you indicated that uh, uh, there were uh, provisions regarding village and searches that were not uh, uh, always, uh, I think it's your words, appropriately implemented in the various member states. Uh, could you be uh, maybe a little bit more uh, uh, specific on that, do you mean by that that there are uh, situations that we saw a little bit here where maybe in some countries uh, the proof of the diligent searches has been organized differently? Uh, we heard about uh, the debate uh, in Belgium. Is it because uh, the sources uh, that are consulted in the various countries may uh, uh, indeed uh, differ uh, uh, very much from one country to the other? What, what were you exactly uh, uh, referring to when you were uh, mentioning? Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't see where you were. Uh, shall I maybe address this point now? Because also I wanted yeah, to say something in that, uh, in that direction. Um, to be very clear, I don't have uh, a complete overview, although I think uh, we would like to have it uh, pretty soon uh, of the specific uh, uh, diligence search mechanism across member states. So I'm not able to give you know, a, full, a full picture. It's just that uh, my impression and <laughs> something that was mentioned by Nicola also earlier this day, so far anecdotal, but you know, as I said, it's something that we plan to study a bit more carefully, uh, is that, uh, you know, okay, we have given some example now, the example of East Germany or more generally, you know, I heard now we'll not be able to, to identify what exactly, you know, sources which, uh, at least according to users, would be uh, obviously irrelevant for the type of work that, uh, uh, that has to be consulted. Uh, I heard more than once uh, some uh, discussions uh, about the concern that uh, some databases would require payments actually to be consulted, uh, while at the same time the consultation of the same databases is a compulsory requirement for the whole mechanism to, to be carried out. So I would say that the relevance of resources and uh, possible blockages or obstacles uh, in the form of payments are the two examples that I had in mind. Uh, but uh, as I said, uh, it's something that uh, we would like to look at uh, more specifically, but this is, it's, it's, it's in our plans actually. Um, I wanted to complement these uh, uh, two elements. One, uh, but should be a relatively easy one, is indeed the transparency starting point. <laughs> Let's make sure that everybody knows about uh, the sources uh, which are uh, applicable uh, uh, everywhere in Europe. And then I think, uh, I didn't know about this project that the colleague from the Library of Amsterdam, if I remember. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Something that I was not aware of, and then, then if you send <laughs> the, the references forward, uh, uh, is doing. Uh, the same, we were thinking with uh, uh, colleagues in the country that probably, you know, one place to federate this information should be the, uh, the database of UIPO. Uh, but I just hope that all these different sources lead to the same conclusion. <laughs> but, uh, but definitely, I mean, transparency, uh, it's important that we should find a good way actually to make sure that everybody uh, uh, at least is informed of the relevant sources. The, Second, and in my opinion, important thing that I wanted to mention, I was checking now back the, the directive that there is a law, and uh, Article 3.2 <laughs> on the diligent search uh, refers to the famous annex that uh, Mrs. Dainart uh, uh, referred to you know, as the list of uh, you know, 
databases or registers that have been consulted, but uh, you know, qualifies this obligation uh, by using the word uh, relevant sources. So, and I, I don't know, I mean, I, I will read the, the English version of it because then, I mean, I, I don't know exactly how this has been rendered in other languages, but uh, Article 3.2, and then anybody can read it in the different languages you work with in your context, that says that the sources that are appropriate for each category of works uh, or phonogram shall be determined by each member states in consultation with right holders. So we hope actually that this you know, happens uh, uh, to be meaningful and users, and shall include, uh, this is the part that I wanted to highlight, shall include at least the relevant sources listed in the annex. And I remember very well a discussion during the LGLT process. Uh, what was meant by relevant was when relevant. So in a way, if we have examples like no, <laughs> registries uh, of films uh, uh, of East Germany for a film uh, produced in 1925, uh, I would say that this should not happen because this source uh, is not relevant, actually. Uh, I recognize that uh, in my mind I had a better uh, reading, uh, you know, uh, I thought that this article in English said when relevant, it says uh, the relevant sources, so this might have been uh, translated in ambiguous ways in different languages, but I think that the, the spirit of the text is that you know we have an annex which is a starting point, but uh, member states can go beyond if necessary, and then you know the more we progress in time, the less this annex will be relevant in any event. But also that uh, you know sources that need to be consulted are those who are relevant, as I said, for the work. So I think that you know, even from a purely legal point of view, there is something that uh, will need to be said, and it's not only the commission. I mean, I think uh, each of you are working on the field and have uh, you know conversations with national authorities. Something that to keep in mind actually, because I think I mean, indeed, probably I don't necessarily think that there were uh, malicious, uh, let's say, plans uh, in cases where something may have been you know not very clear. Uh, uh, in some member states, uh, possibly, you know, in the implementation of this uh, of this mechanism, is just that, as Nicola Mazzanti was saying, uh, probably, you know, we need, you know, everybody to be engaged to make it function in practice and to correct uh, some, some mistakes that have happened. Okay. The last question before, and then I propose to continue the discussion uh, with the coffee. I uh, also have a question for Mr. Giorello on the light of what uh, Mr. Svenard said. Um, it seems that significant part of heritage um, pictures are excluded from uh, the directive. And I wanted to know why the choice was made to exclude them and if you're now working on the topic uh, to, uh, to have a similar directive for uh, still images and pictures. This is short. Uh, pictures are special in the sense that it's very difficult, uh, uh, you know, especially when you have old pictures, uh, to find uh, or even to start looking for the right holders uh, for uh, quite obvious reasons. And, and I understand that for writers this is a specific problem, but it was very difficult and it was a very sensitive discussion and just, you know, to be very short on that, uh, one of the main reasons I'm told why the US, uh, you know, in 2010, I think, uh, didn't manage to pass legislation on orphan works is because there was a huge opposition of photographers, actually. So, uh, pictures are, are, are special, unfortunately, although I understand that they are also very relevant, actually, for digitization projects. Now, uh, in the proposal that we have put on the table now on out-of-commerce works, uh, we are covering also pictures. I suspect that there will be a debate there because you know the same doubts uh, from some sides will come up. But uh, we are trying to cover them with out of commerce works uh, solutions, uh, which, as Nicola said, I mean, if we manage to adopt this legislation, I think to a certain extent we also solve the problem that might have been created by not including them in the orphan books there. <coughs> oh, before closing, I just have one remark about the discussion on sources because I like to complicate things, is, is worse than that. Because there is also the problem of the sources that we know are, are useful and necessary and are not listed nowhere. 
And if uh, you are an institution and wants to be sure that you do a diligent search, diligent doesn't mean following the law, it means going beyond the law. If you read real diligent so you're not in trouble, we needed to find a way to exchange uh, best practices and, and guidelines, and this is goes beyond the list. Because, for example, I just give you one example. If you don't know that exists an Anwar du Cinema Belge, which lists all the films made for several decades in Belgium, which is not in the list of sources. Why? Because it was published by the Cinematheque, which is the only one who knows who the rights are. Coffee. 